Hi folks, and welcome back to Planescape Torment with the Nameless One. Carrying his own arm as a weapon. We have discovered quite a few things as of late. Not sure all we need to know, but... Hmm... We have found people that are... Uh, more knowledgeable on Ravel Puzzle Well. We should also probably talk about uh, finding Mar. They're sure to be hiding somewhere around town. Find the Keen Sneaketa. Oh, we uh, already did that. There. Oh, yeah, we might also find. Uh, huh. Might also find. Uh, Curse removal spell or something, uh, or maybe one of the curious curiosities of the curious curiosities shop. Hmm. Right. We should also deliver letters to Montague. Ah, yes. We should talk to that. Uh, of course. Scufflock pen. Hmm. Should also talk to uh, Merriman. Right, and split Pestle and Kelm. However, we may be able to do that, or not at all. So, uh, Merriman, Merriman. I think he was outside, if I'm not mistaken. I do remember him. Mertwin Jumble. Ugh, Jumble Murder Sense. Well, I have to talk to a few I'm people gone. in here still. Guys is the crooked. Hmm, interesting people all over the place. Well, it is the. Ah, uh, there he is, Montague. One of the people we're looking for. And the throne appears as well as the building itself. It looks unused. More a piece of artwork than a ruler's seat. Well, it is more of an uh, amusement than... Uh, let's say a seat for a governing uh, monarch. Sensate. Kwai Sai. Or Ki Sai. Chi Sai? Chui Sai. Oh, so many ways to pronounce it. And Montague is there. Trumbull Murder Sense is wandering about. Oh, there's more stuff back here. How big is this place? Huh, quite big. Statues of people that we cannot uh, examine. Merriman. Ah, well, might as well talk to the guy. Just who we're looking for. This man's looks like... This man looks like a bitter, cantankerous old codger. Ha, huh, well. His mouth is twisted into a frown that becomes even more severe as he notices you coming his way. Merriman, my name may be, but merry I am not. Ah, yes. Uh, uh, there's a term for that. Uh, nominative determinism? In his case, uh, the opposite. Uh, nominative non-determinism, I guess. Off with you, young one! No time for the likes of you! He goes into a fit of coughing from the exertion of shooing you away so loudly. Wait, 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 old codger! Delora wanted me to speak with you. Merriman eyes you suspiciously. That's so. About what, eh? Hmm? Well... 
She says that you're her first love, and that so long as you hold the keys to her heart, she'll never be free to love another. Oh, so dramatic. She told you that, eh? I'm surprised, perhaps leaving her under Mistress Grace's tutelage. Did what I couldn't. Started to develop her feelings. In any case, he pats a buck on his tunic. I won't just give the keys to you. Uh, what? Those are literally the keys to her heart? He nods. That they are. The lore is a construct, you see. Didn't you know that? A creature of sorcery and clockwork mechanics she is, and one of my finest creations. Ah, but cold without emotion or character. I brought her to the brothel and set her so that she could not leave. In the hopes that the constant contact with so many others would begin to develop her own personality. The keys are the tools used to set her. She wants them because she feels that they're limiting her personal growth now, I suspect. Interesting. Actual keys to her, her, well, not actual, but mechanical heart. Does that work on oranges, too? Clockwork oranges? No? Then, why didn't you just return them to her? Merriman scowls. Because I've become a cruel and bitter old man. Who sees he can get something out of you? Go on, then. What do you want? I want, I want uh, to forget. I've lived almost 150 years now, and I've seen every sensory stone I've cared to in this grand hall. I've little time left to live, and I'm too weak to go out in search of wholly new experiences, so I need to find a way to forget them all. That way, I can start again in my final days. Right, uh, how can I help? Updated my journal. I'll need something, some item, some concoction, that will allow me to forget. Like a draft of the river sticks or something like that. Right, I uh, believe I uh, could find something like that. Farewell. We didn't buy one, did we? <laughs> I don't think so. I do remember something like that. Uh, yeah, so... I do remember... Th Reading something like that, uh, the Curious Shop, I believe. I believe. Not entirely sure, but I believe that's the case. Right, so Merriman uh, wants to die. Ah, death is but a gateway to a new life here. As we have so often found out. Leading to the dormitories. Oh, there's dormitories. This is a large building. Hmm. Well, this facility is certainly something. Merriman's still wandering around. So many rooms to explore. Death's Advocate. Hmm. Mage in training. They're all mages in training, right? Trumple murder sense. Thief in training. All thieves in training. Let's talk to this fellow, shall we? At some point. <laughs> First, let's explore all the rooms. See who's who up here. Let's say to three planes aligned. Hmm. Warrior in training, right. Barrior and more warriors in training. Right. Uh, well, I think we should talk to people. So, who haven't we talked to? Uh, I think we've only talked to Splinter and Merriman, I guess. Mertwin. The Headless. It's clear there's something very wrong with this man. The way he lurches about, bumping into things, staring off blankly into space. Huh, kinda sounds like me. As you approach him, you will last realize his plight. He's headless. No, he isn't. 
Oh, yes, he is. The thing on his shoulders is merely a scuffly carved wooden prosthesis. Oh, a false head. Bonk. Greetings. The headless body stops fumbling for a moment and pauses. Its hands begin to reach out, as if trying to feel exactly where you are. Okay, let it touch you. After a moment, its finger brushes your forearm. It clutches your arm and follows it up to the shoulder, then your head. As it feels your face and head, its hands brush your neck, as if it were checking for something. Like what? Finally, it grabs your hand and shakes it vigorously in greeting. You notice that its skin is cold and slightly clammy. Well, no head, no ears, but can you understand me? The figure makes a series of hand motions, then waits for a response. Seems like it's asking a question. I don't speak sign language. Headless sign language. I don't understand. The headless body taps its foot for a moment. Scratching at the chin of its prosthetic head, suddenly it raises a finger as if struck by an idea. It points at you, then at the eyes of its wooden head, then at you again. Then indicates its wooden head and with both hands shrugs and points at you. No, we haven't seen your head. Wait. Are you Morte's body? The headless body shrugs, slumps a bit, then turns to amble off. Uh... Hey, what's eating you, Chief? Hey, uh... Hmm, no. How did you die, Morte? Curious. No idea, Chief. I kind of forgot when I died. Can't say I blame myself much. At least there was something waiting for me when I, after I died. It's a life as a floating skull. I mean, it could have been worse. Ha. <laughs> well... Just, uh, never mind the context we're in, but uh, what happened to your body, exactly? Uh, I don't know, right? It's just gone. Marte stares at you. But I uh, don't think I miss it, because I'm happy just the way I am. Yeah. And I don't need your half-wit judgments or snide remarks, all right? <laughs> uh, shake a leg. <laughs> Let's not say that. I have some other questions, um, but later. Hmm. So probably not Morte's body? Probably. They mostly came at night. Mostly. Montague, we have business with you. This handsome young man seems lost in thought, his brow furrowed and a slight frown upon his lips. Everyone has furrowed brows. Greetings! It's almost as if uh, a single uh, writer... Uh, Furrows everyone, everyone's brows, for lack of a better descriptive uh, language. Are you Montague? I need to speak about you with... <laughs> about you with Juliet. With you about Juliet. Oh? He gives you a puzzled, slightly suspicious look. <laughs> is, is, uh, is it the floating skull? My uh, mangled, uh, decrepit body? Uh, my uh, rat-tailed... Uh, friend or my uh, otherworldly uh, what is he uh, slave I guess I overheard her speaking at the brothel she's having an affair you know thou speak falsely I would have thee present me proof present me proof present me present me proof before I took thy claim as true huh uh, good point. Farewell. We have to find proof. Interesting. He or Quisai. Let's see what this fella has to say. This is a life-sized granite statue of a gentleman standing with his arms at his sides, eyes closed. Oh. It is of excellent craftsmanship, exquisitely detailed and incredibly lifelike. So much so, in fact, that uh, you find yourself wondering if it's really a statue at all. Greetings. No response. Uh, Chief, you've seen statues before, right? Know that they don't talk or anything. Consider this, Morty. You're a floating 
talking skull who's denying the possibility of a living statue. Well, uh... Got me there, boss. Yeah, I did. <laughs> that I do, Morte. I'll just, uh, touch him now. You touch the statue and find that, uh, while the clothes that adorn it are of, uh, grey cloth rather than rock, the skin is as cool and hard as granite. Hmm, why would uh, someone clothe a statue? Maybe it's a little too anatomically correct, chief. It was a rhetorical question, Morte. Sure, boss, I knew that. You don't know anything, Morte. You're an idiot. An idiot that I cannot trust. Let's not hit it. Uh, do we have... No, not right now. Uh, we did... Oh. Wasn't there something we could use to turn stuff uh, from stone back into living? Maybe at the Curious Curiosities shop. Oh, maybe we shouldn't have used it on the... Ooh, the cursed uh, statue at the museum, maybe. Hmm. Oh well. Uh, let's see, who was uh, down here? Guys, is the crooked. The squat, hunched old man, still has the broad shoulders and scarred, calloused hands of a worker or warrior. An aura of weary despair seems to hang about him. He appears to be giving a lecture at the moment. Huh, let's stay for the lecture, I guess. Right, <clears throat> now listen up. This is the seminar on the war. If uh, you're here to listen about the blood war, dick root. If you're not, you're in the wrong and uh, all you'd best uh, ump your soft, uh, comfort-loving, sigillian limber steps uh, out of here. The blood war. The more boring than listening to a governor recite laws. Let's find some young senses who need to be indoctrinated in the ways of passion. <laughs> he waggles eyebrows in anticipation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ignore Morty. The man suddenly throws a dark eye over the audience, as if looking for something. And further, if you're Tanari or Batizu, ump your skill yards at the door. He's not letting you ordinary bastards bend an ear to this and then listen to your barmy arguments. Keep listening. Because this is no discussion on who's right. Behind you, you hear the sounds of something large <laughs> leaving the lecture hall. Uh, yeah. Well, I didn't see a ton of rear. Okay, but it just tells the blood war from the human point of view. It's not promoting one side or another, because they uh, both stink in different ways. Keep listening. The speaker becomes somber. So, what's left of your wanting to listen to some Blood War stories? Tales about the war. Here to hear the order of it all, no doubt. The floating fortresses wove and weaved. Oh, human skin. The plains wide blood grounds the Blood Wars be fought on. Uh, right. Uh, do you have a brother called Yoda? Keep listening. He bears his yellowed teeth. Tales of fiends, looking fangs with locking fangs with other fiends. Grr, snarl. His snarl fades as he look suddenly bored. Uh, yeah. Keep listening. Well, let me peel back your lids and crack your bone boxes. It is all a steaming heap of barmy nonsense to be dwelling on that fortune tank. He sips and he spits in derision, rolling his eyes wildly. <laughs> uh, rather, do you have a brother uh, uh, called Blackadder? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Maybe Baldrick. Yes, Baldrick. Keep listening. I'll tell you this, though. You can't imagine the scale the blood war is fought on. Nothing you've seen, heard, or participated in, nothing compares. Time, numbers of legions, sheer bloodshed, nothing compares, Burks. To try and imagine it, forget it. My advice, simple, stay away from the big bloody mess altogether. 
Man, that stuff on the the voice box. <laughs> ah. How do voice actors do this? Keep listening. The only thing you need to know is this. Fiends are killing fiends, Batizo are slaughtering Tarnari. Tarnari are butchering Batizo. Right now, he spits again, neither's winning. Don't think either can win. Biggest still be the side of eternity. Thank of the powers. Right, well, that's it. <laughs> he shrugs. That's it. I'll be answering any questions you got for me now. <laughs> yeah, well, very detailed. <laughs> What? <laughs> uh, high tales of nothing is what this fella has. Ask a question. What's your question, Cutter? Uh, so you'll tell us no tales of the Blood War? Alright. One. Let me give you an example of what meat means to them. They get some mean-spirited mortal mercenaries together. Maybe a drop of a few million strong and let them slaughter each other for no real reason at all. A pointless battle over some... Over... Some... Over some powers forsaken piece of land. Guess where all those souls go? Where? Their souls sink into the plains of evil they fight on. Where they can be ripped from the soup of the plain and set to fight against their limbers. Or mains or whatever the pike and saw those little fiendish dung heaps become. The more of those sudden petitioners they get, the more troops they have. Hmm. Well, uh, a winning uh, self-feeding uh, proposition? Let me ask you about something else. Can't you give me a little more on the blood war itself? If I were to boil it down, <laughs> what, you didn't boil it down to a, an oversimplified meaningless statement? It'd be this. The blood war's been going on damn near forever, and I'll keep going on until damn near forever until itself gets spent in the dead book. The Tanari, the champions of chaos and evil, are trying to stop the green-colored dung after the Batizo. The champions of law and evil. They butcher each other over oh, which show them thinks evil should be. If you can believe that, ha! Uh, yes, you are a very eloquent man. So people kill each other because they think they're righteous and the others are evil. Uh, but uh, everyone has the same point of view. So who is evil really? Mm -hmm. So you're a relative situationist. Um, hmm. Maybe a nihilist. Hmm. What do you think would happen if someone stopped the blood war? Yeah, can't me make any piking difference in the war. It's too sudden big. You're a stone, a pebble, in an ocean that's a pebble in another ocean, which is a pebble in another ocean, and so on and so forth, till the stench cars come home. As a pebble, your goal is to be not noticed and sink to the bottom with the rest of the dregs. So it's, uh... Turtles all the way down, I see. Uh, mm -hmm. Nice philosophy. Go on. If you could make a difference, which you can't, you shouldn't try, because then the planes would tumble on down. The planes would tumble? How so? He holds up his, uh, he holds up his lines like pillars. The blood war is like a big, bloody support beam propping up the planes. Kick it down, and a lot of the planes come tumbling down with it. Lot of baggage rests on the back of the war, he suddenly tr brays like a donkey, laughing bitterly. <laughs> Biggest, nastiest pack animal, animal on the planes. Uh, right, so... Hmm. Geysis, Geysis, Geysis. Uh, I don't know if that means anything. Go on, let him speak. He grins cynically. Besides, as some say, war's great for business. He laughs hollowly. Then looks as if he could suddenly cry. Well, I was about to say, uh, laughs like data. Ha! 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 But no. Eh, never you mind that. Another question? Are you alright? You seem pained. The man smiles sadly. Aye, aye. 
Listen, Cutter, I'm no priest, nor would I want to be one. But hear this, keep evil out of your heart. When you die with evil in your heart, your spirit falls into the lower planes where you become a petitioner. Right. Any guesses as to what happens then? Petitioners in the abyss and Bator get twisted into foot soldiers and get to fight in the blood wars for all eternity. He chuckles, shaking his head. So that's the dark is that uh, why the Batezo and the Tanari and corrupt all they touch. Because they need more troops. Eat this. Keep evil far from your heart, Burke. We will try to keep on the uh, the path of balance. Let's talk about something else. Hmm. What started the blood war? You got a right to be curious what started this big old sudden soupy mess in the first place. What set the fiends to lock in order in the first place? Uh, Biden and cloying at each other until that was the only reason they were alive. Uh... That's a circular, um, uh, go on. Simple, they met. Ah, Tanari, Batezo crossed each other one day and like a two drunken bigots, they set to fighting. That simple. He frowns. Well. Uh, go on. Nah, pike that. Imagine two drunken priests who believe each uh, knows the only way to live. Now make those priests uh, ripped in scales and fangs and horns and a cruel streak even seven leagues wide and put them in a itty bitten sudden cell. And you have a good idea at the love they can spring forth. And there you have it. The origin of the blood war. Right, so, uh, again, an oversimplified, uh, it's not even a parable. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, my literary, uh, uh, knowledge is uh, rusty. Uh, not a parable. Is it an allegory? Hmm. Why uh, are two evil races fighting then? One believes evil should be a nice and orderly, and believes evil should be chaos running rampant across the plains. Both evil, but doesn't mean they can agree on anything. Bad blood. Bad blood. Each wants to exterminate the other, so only their brand of evil remains. They hate each other like, uh, like, uh... He uh, wrings his hands together, trying to find the right words. You see, uh, they don't hate like we hate. We don't even know what hate is. We have, uh, one, one word for hate. They have, um, thousands upon thousands. Their meanings twisted and piled like, uh, bodies. That's why they fight. Because of uh, abundant vocabulary for uh, hate, a plethora of synonyms uh, brings forth a war, I guess. Mm hmm. You speak the truth. Or maybe just uh, nonsense. What's your question, Cutter? Uh. 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 How does one survive the Blood War? You wanna know? How to survive the blood war. You like to survive, eh? It's good to survive, eh? Yes. Three things, Cutter. He holds up a maimed hand with only two fingers. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> First off, <laughs> you stay the pike out of it. Secondly, keep yourself the pike and tails out of it. And lastly, you stay the bloody pike and sword pike out of it. First rule of Fight Club. Don't talk about Fight Club. Go on. And if any part of the war rolls your way, let your imagination give your bum a kick and run as far as fast as you can. If you can't run, then... Uh, lies really still and pray it uh, passes by. He pauses for a moment. Except... Uh, there's no place it don't touch, and there's almost nowhere you can run to get away from it. Uh, right, so if there's nowhere to run, why aren't those, um, fiends fighting here in Sigil? Oh, now, look at her. Uh, they've uh, fought here a few times. Sometimes we get a little spillover from the Blood War. Ah, oh, Lady of Pain, bless her still reading the heart, puts out the fires. Go on. 
some of the time. He sneers. There's been times. Some horrifying. Drizzle on yourself with your sudden scared times. When they've smashed and burnt and clawed their way through whole sudden city blocks and sigil. F what should signs to clean house. He clucks his tongue and winks cynically. So she ain't always as keen on stopping the blood war as it might seem, see? Mm-hmm. But uh, when this happens, why don't just the fiends take the whole of sigil? He laughs, but it turns into a sputtering cough. Ah, uh, like the one I'm uh, soon to have. Ah, my throat. Don't get me wrong now. Both the Tanari and the Bartezu want sigil fierce. It is the most precious staging ground in the Pike and Metalverse. The cage is the city of doors and connects everywhere. You can't ignore it. And if you're seven in the Blood War and want to win, you gotta have it. Right. The man coughs again. Tis just the fiends aren't going to get it while the lady's in charge, tis all. She's tough as nails. Her blazon will cut you deeper than any fiend's fang. And all that knots the fiend's stems like you wouldn't believe. One quiet lady, her hand stuck in her sleeves, holding back the blood or all by herself. He laughs bitterly. Hmm, but the fiends are still allowed in sigil, right? Oh, damnably certain. They can't brawl in the streets too much. So as neutral ground, sigil allows them to rattle their bone boxes without trying to murder each other. Sometimes they'll chatter up with each other here. The peace don't stay that long, uh... That way for long, though. Also, just because they can't butcher each other in the streets, don't means uh, spies, recruitment, and backstabbing don't still go on here. They fight battles with lies and words, Burke. Sometimes tis all in the bluster and blather. And they're safe houses about, too. Places where they can cool their talents before the next skirmish. And they like to recruit here too. Looking for boys fresh off the plains with a little greed in their hearts. That they can make part of their glorious army. He stops speaking to peer closely at you. Mayhap they recruited you on, eh, Cutter? You look like you've uh, tasted the war. I doubt it. The war leaves a scar on you, Cutter. Ye know. And ye'd, uh, know ye never want to go back. Your temples begin to throb painfully as you consider the man's words. A memory begins to surface. Try to recall it. The lecture hall begins to fade from view as a terrible... Oh. As terrible visions begin to seep up from the base of your mind. Visions of a place where seasons are like nothing you've ever felt or heard. Or tried to shut out. A place where prayers go unheard, falling like stones to the earth. Vain colored lightning flashes across things that were once sky, but now boil beneath your feet and scream when you brush against them. Well, that turned fast. Continue the memory. You run at the head of a large band of men. Well, at least we got the tenured leadership, I guess. Passing through dark canyons where the walls quiver mostly and beat like a heart, wearing only your blood as clothing. At last you stand in a place where the ashen grey terrain slithers like a mass of snakes. Uh... Creep? Hmm. Coiling around your ankles and whispering your evil to the earth. You march endlessly, silently. Through this colorless land where fatigue seems to live and hunt you like a shade of the wastes, uh, over the wastes, whipping you with despair. Hmm. In time, you and the ragged men who follow you come upon a hag sitting upon a mound of gigantic writhing larvae. Yag. Poking at one of the slime covered things with a broken talon. You indicate for one of the men to run forward and speak with her. The hag's grating voice carries to your ears. Maybe the lady, maybe Puzzlewell. I would speak with him, she said, then cackled. Her eyes gleam as she points you out to the man. <laughs> I assume. The handsome one that leads your ragged column. 
I would speak with him. And that is all you can recall. No wonder. I'd faint at that uh, cackle, I guess. Cutter, you're feeling all right there. Yes, yes. <laughs> I'm fine, fine. My life uh, was, uh, and it has always been a wonderful sequence of uh, placid uh, and happy events. I'm fine. So the fiends recruit often, you say? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He uh, nods grimly. You can be sure of that. Citral's the best source of fodder on the plains. Beets, milk, and planets are all their prime inhabitants. Too much work. Right, so... Any more advice, then? Aye. Whatever you does. Don't talk about Fight Club or the Blood War with any fiend. Or any diva or archon, for that matter. Just don't talk about it. Period. Because you never know who in the hells you're really chatting with. And all of them get mighty touchy when you bring up the war. It's their reason for living. Anything else? He nods. Don't go through any portal unless you're piking sure you know where it goes. Maybe you haven't heard tales of clueless planeswalkers stepping through a portal and ending up smack dab in the middle of the Blood War skirmish. Know why you haven't heard of them? Because those swords are dead. 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 Huh. Anything else? Anne! <laughs> Man, the guy never shuts up. Whatever you does, never sign on for a tour of duty. No matter how much chink they flesh in your mug. Certain death and signing on for a tour in the blood war on the same thing, Cutter. Maybe this guy's brother is Tim the Magician. Hmm. Could be, could be. Is there a rabbit around here? Hmm. Don't see one. Are you a rabbit uh, hiding in that skull, uh, Morte? Maybe. Flying rabbit. Uh, the, the rabbit did fly in a uh, hmm, quest for the Holy Grail. Maybe that's the rabbit inside uh, Morte's skull. Why is that? Chances are, when you sign up, they peel you so your total duty is uh, till time itself grinds to a halt. Even death wouldn't be a release. Because then you sink into the lower planes and get dredged back up as something worse than you were before. Then they got their talons on you for all eternity. How would you get out of a tour contract? Unless they don't want you. You don't have much chance. Never heard of it being done with mean-spirited recruits or somebody they really wanted to keep their talons on. Ah, with Natanari is risky business. But can be done. The Batezu are much more dangerous with their contracts. You sign one of those, you're done for life. Go on. You might try a little garnish. Try and Tobin and they might like, uh, let me uh, make a run for it. But where would you go? There are so many else. Mm-hmm. And dying the blood war would be uh, an especially bad thing. If you're evil, sure. If you're good, you got another plane to spend your afterlife. But you'd still be a deader. Nah, for me, I still got a lot of evil to wash from my soul. So if I'd uh, died in the lower plains, they uh, would have ma had me lock and stock in battle. You got another plane? Can you explain that? Go talk to that other death lecturer if you want the dark on that. I uh, can explain it as well, and as... Uh, that is twice the fool and might scald you with uh, that hot air out in front of its mouth. Right. Ah, I think we've heard enough from you. Right! This is the last bit then. <laughs> Finally. Some of you are senses. So as I got one thing to say to you. Don't sign up to see uh, what the Pike and Blood War is about. Don't be a barmy idiot. Use a sensory stone if you got to know, but stay the hells away from anything to do with the Blood War for real. Keep listening. Tis just not worth it. Tis... For a moment, a look, uh, a great pain look uh, crosses the man's face. It looks as if he's going to weep. Not worth it at all. That's the end of the session, so farewell. Probably lost someone. Maybe himself. At some point. Hmm. Man. My throat aches after that. Uh, why did you have to... Speak like a, a caricature, uh, not really Scottish, but uh, 
scotch-like uh, voice. It's the only one I can do. <coughs> yes, I can. Uh, the only one I can do effectively. Uh, but it destroys my voice. Hmm. Well, I uh, think we should talk to some more people around here. But uh, there's not those that many people. These are guys are training, and I guess there's only murder sense left. Oh, and that's the dormitory, so we can uh, also check out the dormitories. But yeah, I think we should just speak to this murder sense fellow, the last named character out here in the halls. Oh, actually not. That's the death advocate that the... Oh, uh, yeah, that he uh, told us to speak to. Oh, and also the two things aligned guy. Okay, well, lots more people to talk to. This place is a treasure trove of knowledge. But all of that is going to be next time. Till then.